right, we're going to solve a system of equations using inverse matrices. So we're going to let x, matrix x, be our solutions. Matrix A is going to be the coefficient matrix. And matrix B is going to be the right side of the original equations. Sorry about my handwriting. And then if you look at the three matrices, which we will in a minute, we have A times X really does equal B. And so we want to solve for the solutions, which is X. So since there isn't division in matrices, the only way to get rid of A to isolate X then is to multiply by its inverse. Now, multiplication order matters with matrices. So I have to multiply it on the left by A inverse. So since I have to do it on the left there, then I also have to do it on the left on the right side. So I get A inverse times A times X, and the A inverse and the A cancel, just giving me X, equals A inverse times B. So that's where that, that formula comes from, to be able to solve, matri uh, solve a system of equations using matrices. All right, so here's an example. So we have three equations and three variables. First thing to do is to set up our matrices. So A is the coefficient matrix. I'll write it all out first, and then I'll go ahead and read through them. So A is the coefficient matrix. Uh, if you read across, this is just the left-hand side of the equation. So it's 2, negative 1, and 1. Those are the coefficients of the x, y, and z. And then the second equation, the coefficients are 1, 3, and negative 1. And then the third equation, the coefficient of x is 1. Notice there is no y, so its coefficient must be 0 and then the coefficient of z is 2. And then my x matrix, my solution matrix, is going to be just the letters x, y, and z, which will eventually have numbers in them. And then matrix B is the solutions that are on the right-hand side, the negative 2, the 10, and the negative 8. And if you really did take the time to multiply matrix A times matrix x and set it equal to matrix B, you would get these three equations. So the first step is I'm going to have to find the inverse of matrix A, and A is a square matrix. So I'll go ahead and write out A on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side I'll write a 3 by 3 identity matrix. So one's along the, the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And then remember my goal is to get that identity matrix on the left-hand side and then on the right-hand side will be the inverse by doing row operations. So we always want to work left to right, so column by column, and we don't want to have to undo stuff, you know, fix stuff that we messed up. So the order to do this in is starting on the far left, you want to get a 1 in the top corner. Well, if you look at that first column, I've got a couple ones, so I'll just, doesn't matter which one I use, I just use the one in row three. So I'm going to swap row one and row three. And that's all I did to get to the next matrix. So now row one is one, zero, two, zero, zero, one. And don't forget to swap across that bar. And then row two is the same as it was before. And then row three is the old row one. So it's two, negative one, one. And then one, zero, zero. Now it's important to label your rows. And I probably should have done it before I swapped, but I'm going to start now. So row A is going to be the 1, 0, 2. So I have row A, row B, and row C. This will help to follow your arithmetic that you're doing on each row. So now you notice row A has a 1 where I want it. Okay, so only get a 1 in a matrix. And then in the next matrix, I'm going to make sure that row B and row C have zeros in that first column. And I'm going to use the one in row A to get those. So since A is not going to change, I'm going to write A out. Now, to get B to be a zero, then I would have to take the opposite of A and add it to B and replace B. So I'm going to call that row D. So I'm going to get negative one plus one is zero. I'm going to get negative zero, which is just zero, plus three, is still 3. I'm going to get negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. I'm going to get negative 0 plus 0 is 0. 
negative 0 plus 1 is 1, and negative, the opposite of 1, is negative 1, plus 0 is negative 1. So that's how I got the second row. And now I'm going to fix row C as well. I want that 2 to become a 0. Again, I want to work one whole column at once. So to get that to be a 0, then I'm going to use the 1 that I have in A, and so I'm going to take negative 2 times that, so negative 2 times row A, and add it to row C to replace row C. We'll see a pattern here. I always use the 1 to get the zeros. So reading left to right, again, I'm using the, the matrix behind it, so negative 2 times the 1 plus 2 is 0. And then negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus negative 1 is still negative 1. And then I'm in the third column, so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then add 1 gives me the negative 3. And then remember, go across the bar, so negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is still 1. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is still 0. And finally, negative 2 times 1, that's in row A, is negative 2. Adding it to row C, adding 0, is negative 2. So that's how I get that third one. So now you can see that my first column is done. And from here on out, it's really important to follow the two steps that I said. Now I really want to get my one first in my next column. And then I want to use that one to get the zeros in that column. By doing it in that order, it won't mess up column one. Column one will always stay correct, and I won't have to go back and fix it again. All right, so now I want a one in the next column. And if you look, there's a three and there's a negative one in the next column. Um, since there's a zero in A, then I'm not going to change that one at all. So I just went ahead and wrote A. Now I can either use D or E to get a one. Well, E looks easier to get a one because it's almost one. You could use D, but you're going to introduce fractions, and I wouldn't suggest that. So I always divide to get a one, or in this case, I'm going to multiply by negative one. So I'm going to move E up to be in the middle, and I'm just going to take its opposite. So you notice, just E, if I write the opposite, I get 0, 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 2. But I'm just going to swap it at the same time so that it's, it's in the second row. That gives me the one where I want it. Now I don't want to change that third row at the same time. I just want to get a 1 in a column. That's the only thing I want to do in a new matrix. So I'm just going to write what used to be the second row now for this, for D. So I didn't change anything. All I did is I got my 1. Now let me rewrite this on a new page. Otherwise we won't be able to see it. Okay, so I haven't changed anything. This is just what we had. We have our first column is completely done, and now our second column has the 1 where we want it. So now we need a 0 above it and a 0 below it. Well, there's already a 0 above it. So I just need to change the 3 below it to a 0. So I know I'm not going to change row A, so I'll go ahead and leave row A as 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1. And then I should have called the opposite of E, I should have called it a new row so I could refer to it. So I should have called it F. And so I'll call it F now, but I didn't change anything. Notice it's just 0, 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 2. Now why am I not changing anything? Because I really, I have my 1, and I want to make sure there's zeros above it. Well, there was already a zero above it, so now I want to make sure there's a zero below it. So this one I do have to change. And I always want to use my one to get my zero. So if you look at the, the previous matrix, you can see that if I take row F and I multiply it by negative three, then I will get the opposite of that three. So always end up adding the row you're going to change. So in other words, I want to take negative three times F and add D to change D. And I'll call that G. So we have negative 3 times 0 plus 0 is still 0. Notice I didn't mess up my first column. And then negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 
And then negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus negative 3 is negative 12. And then remember, you have to go across the bar. So negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, plus 0 is 3. And then negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And finally, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus negative 1 is negative 7. So that's how I got that new row. Alright, now, I'm done with column 1, I'm done with column 2, I'm on to column 3. Okay, so the very first thing I always want to do as I get to a new column, remember, is get a 1. Always divide to get the 1, otherwise you might possibly affect the previous columns that you always finished. So notice the 1 that I need is in row G. So I'm not going to change A and F. I just get a 1. That's all I'm going to do in one matrix. So I know it's a lot of writing, but it's easier to follow. So I didn't change A. I didn't change F. I just wrote them. And now to get a 1 in row G, I just need to divide. So I'm going to take G and divide it by negative 12. I'm going to call it something new. I'm going to call it H. So I get 0, 0, 1. And then remember, I'm dividing by negative 12. So I get negative 1 fourth, negative 1 twelfth, and 7 twelfths. At this point, I really hope you have a calculator that does fractions, because I'm about to do some fractions. Now, notice column 1 and column 2 are completely finished. I don't want to mess those up. And I now have my 1 for column 3. Okay, so again, if I got the 1 first, which I did, now I'm going to use that 1 to get zeros above it to make the 2 and the 3 turn into zeros. So I'll do both of those in the next matrix. So I know H is not going to change, so I'll just go ahead and write it down. 0, 0, 1, negative 1 fourth, negative 1 twelfth, 7 twelfths. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is make row A have a 0 up there where there was a 2. So to use my 1, I need to take negative 2 times all of row H, so that becomes a negative 2 there, and I'm going to add it to A to replace A, and we'll just call that row I. Okay, and notice, again, I'm not changing my first two columns by doing this. So I'm going to take that third row, multiply it by negative 2, and then add it to the first row. So 0 times negative 2 is 0. Plus 1 is still 1. It didn't change that. Okay, and then 0 times negative 2 is still 0. Plus 0 is still 0. And then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So I have my 1, 0, 0 in that top row. And then the rest uh, becomes 1 half, 1 sixth, and negative 1 sixth. So you'll have to, again, it's nice if you have a calculator that does fractions so you don't have to sit there and do that by hand. All right, now I need to take that middle row, row F, and where the 3 is, that needs to become a 0. So that means I am going to have to take and multiply row H by negative 3 and add F to it. So I'm going to take the third row, multiply it all by negative 3, and then add it to the second row to replace the second row. We'll just call it J. And notice that the first two columns don't change. So if I take negative 3 times 0 and add it to 0, I still have 0. If I take negative 3 times 0 and add it to 1, I still have 1. And then if I take negative 3 times 1 and add it to 3, I get my 0. So, and then again, the fractions, I'll let you do those on your calculator. Okay, so you make sure, like, you pause this and try to make sure you can get those. So you're multiplying the entire row 3 by negative 3, and then you're adding it to row 2 to replace row 2. All right, so now if you look at the left, I have my identity. So the right-hand side must be the inverse. Okay, so that's all I've done is I've found the inverse so far. So now we have to take the inverse of A and multiply it by the B matrix, and we'll get our A, B, and our X, Y, and Z. Okay. So remember, our inverse was 1 half, 1 sixth, negative 1 sixth, negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth, and 1 fourth and then negative 1 fourth, negative 1 twelfth, and 7 twelfths. So that was what we got for the inverse. And then B, I had written down before, those were the numbers on the right-hand side of the equation. So it was negative 2, 10, and negative 8. 
So we have to multiply these two matrices. So multiply the matrix multiplication will take row one, column one, and that will give us the very first row, which there's only one element in it. So it'll be one half times negative two plus one sixth times ten plus negative one sixth times negative eight. And I'll do that again for row two. And again, there's only going to be one element. So it's negative one fourth times negative two plus one fourth times ten plus one fourth times negative eight. And then finally, we'll do this for row three. And again, there'll only be one element here. So we'll have negative one fourth times negative two, negative one twelfth times ten, and seven twelfths times negative eight. So I'm going to simplify that first row, which only has one element in it, and it becomes negative 1 plus 5 thirds plus 4 thirds. And I'll go ahead and just simplify that one element, and you'll see it's 2. So basically what I just found is that the value of x is 2, because remember that's x, y, and z is that last answer matrix. All right, and then row two, which has only one element in it, becomes one half plus five halves minus two, which simplifies to be one. And what that tells us is that y is one. And then finally, that third row, which again is really only one element, is one half minus five sixths minus 14 thirds, which simplifies to be negative five. So after all of that, we have x is 2, y is 1, and z is negative 5. Now, there are easier ways to solve matrices, like Gaussian elimination, Gauss-Jordan elimination. You can solve the system more quickly than I just did, but the inverse matrix method is really nice for calculators. So you can put A into your matrix in the calculator. You can put B in a matrix in a calculator, and then you can just tell the calculator to multiply A inverse by B, and then it will give you the answer matrix.